Hi, and welcome to this demo. Today I'm going to show you vSAN 6.6, and in particular, the stretch clustering functionality and the stretch clustering enhancements that were introduced in vSAN 6.6. I already have eight hosts in this particular uh, compute cluster, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enable vSAN, and I'm going to enable deduplication and compression, and on top of that, stretch clustering, which is fully supported, and we have a lot of customers actually doing this. So we'll tick the deduplication and compression tick box, and we'll also tick the configure stretch cluster tick box itself. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to validate the network. We need to make sure that all of the VM kernel interfaces uh, have been enabled for vSAN, and if we have IP addresses assigned. And as you can see, we have green tick boxes everywhere, and we have an IP address assigned to every single VM kernel interface. So that's set up correctly. We'll also quickly check the caching tier, and the uh, capacity tier, we've done that plenty of times, so I'm not going to explain that. These are the disks that are going to be used for vSAN, for the vSAN disk groups, and for the vSAN data store itself. Now, this is the stretch clustering screen. So what we'll need to do next is select the four hosts that are part of the other site. In this particular case, we have a site called preferred, and we have a site called secondary. Um, I've just selected the, uh, the secondary hosts and clicked uh, them over to the right side. As you can see, they are now part of the secondary of the secondary fault domain, and that's all we need to do from a vSAN perspective. What will happen uh, as soon as we're done? vSAN will make sure at the back end that the whole system is aware that these hosts are part of the other location itself. So what we're going to do next is we're going to click next, and then we'll be selecting a host that is going to act as the the quorum mechanism in vSAN. Uh, vSAN's case, we call that a witness host. So what we'll do is we'll select the host that was already part of our data center, and then we're going to claim the disks uh, that are also part of this particular host. We need to claim the disks uh, for vSAN itself, because the host itself doesn't act as a witness mechanism, doesn't act as a quorum mechanism, but the components that are stored on top of this particular witness host are actually used as a quorum mechanism for virtual machines. So we're going to select the caching disk, and we're going to select the capacity disks as well, as this is where the, those components will be stored. So now we're done creating the, uh, the vSAN cluster, creating the stretch cluster configuration as well, and we've also enabled deduplication and compression. As you can see, it can be done uh, literally within two minutes, uh, fairly straightforward. So what's going to happen next is the vSAN configuration will be pushed to each of the individual hosts in the cluster. And of course, on top of that, all of the local devices that we've selected and the caching devices, uh, will form into a, in, into a disk group, and all of these disk groups will de then uh, be shared as a, uh, as, as a single shared data store uh, to this particular uh, cluster, so to the vSAN cluster. In this case, as I said, uh, you will end up with a single shared data store, and on top of that single shared data store, you will be capable of provisioning your virtual machines. Before we can start provisioning virtual machines, we'll just need to make sure that this part has uh, fully finished. So uh, within a couple of seconds, you should see the number of disks uh, popping up. And then what, what's going to happen as well is uh, we'll be formatting those, uh, those disks with the latest on-disk format to ensure that the deduplication and compression uh, works properly. So that's hopefully going to finish in, in a couple of seconds. Uh, uh, couple of seconds, and as soon as that's uh, completely configured, we're going to check the uh, default domains and stretch cluster configuration, because we need to make sure uh, that we've assigned the right hosts to the correct fault domain. So this part of the configuration is now done. The formatting uh, will start within a second. So we're already going to click the fault domain and stretch cluster section, so we can check and validate the configuration itself. Hopefully that is uh, is correctly set up, and if we if it is correctly set up, we can go uh, create new policies. So as you can see, uh, we have two fold domains, each with four hosts. Those were the four hosts that we've selected. So what we can do now is start creating policies. So we're going to create to the uh, to the policy sections. Uh, we need to select the VM storage policies because we need to create the VM storage policy for vSAN. Uh, in this particular case, we're going to create three new policies. So we're going to collect, uh, we're going to click create VM storage policy first. We're going to give it an appropriate name. In this particular case, the first policy that we're creating 
is a policy for a stretched virtual machine with no local protection. So that's the name we're going to give it, which makes it fairly obvious when we start deploying virtual machines, which policy to pick. So we've selected or we provided the name. What we need to do now is select the type of storage that we're using. So we'll select the, uh, the vSAN storage provider, and then we're going to add the rules. The primary level of failures to tolerate dictates if you would like to have data replicated across those two fault domains that we've just set up. The secondary level of failures to tolerate um, specifies if you would like to have any form of local protection. Now, in this particular case, we've said that we will have no local protection, which means the secondary level of failures to tolerate should be set to zero. So we'll have two copies of the data, each in one of those uh, two locations. So we just finished the creation of the, uh, the first policy, and now we're going to create the second policy. The second policy is going to be, again, a stretched virtual machine. But in this case, what we will have is we will have local protection for these particular virtual uh, machines. It's going to be a RAID 5 local protection, so we'll provide it a, a proper name. We're going to select the vSAN storage provider again, which will then show us the rules that we can use for vSAN in particular. Primary level of failures to tolerate is one, because the data needs to be available on both sides. But we'd also like to have local protection, so now we're going to specify the secondary level, level of failures to tolerate, which is one. And we're going to select RAID 5 as the failure tolerance method. So as soon as we start deploying virtual machines, when we select this policy, you should see a RAID 1 configuration followed by two RAID 5 configurations. But we'll show that in a, in a second. Last but not least, uh, also a, a cool option with vSAN 6.6, it's the ability to specify that virtual machines don't need to be replicated across locations, but still need to be protected locally. So in this case, I'm going to specify uh, the name for it, not stretched, and I'm going to give it affinity to a particular site as well. So I'm going to give it an affinity with the preferred site. I select the vSAN storage uh, type, the primary level of failures to tolerate in this case is zero because it doesn't need to be copied across sites, but the secondary level of failures to tolerate is going to be one because it needs to have protection within the site. Again, I'm going to select the failure tolerance method. It's going to be set to RAID 5 because I would like to have a RAID 5 configuration locally. This is an old flash cluster, so why not benefit of RAID 5? And then I'm going to set affinity for the data as well. The data needs to reside in the preferred fault domain. So now I've set up the policy, and this policy literally dictates there should be a single copy of the data in the preferred uh, fault domain or a, a, a single tree in the data uh, in, in the preferred fault domain, which is going to be a RAID 5 configuration. So we just created those three new policies, and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create three new virtual machines. I'm going to assign the policies that I've just created to those virtual machines. And then what we'll do after the creation of the virtual machines is we will validate if these particular virtual machines have been provisioned uh, correctly within the vSAN environment on top of that vSAN data store. So the first virtual machine, I'm going to give it an appropriate name, which aligns with the policy that I'm selecting. So in this case, a stretch virtual machine plus a RAID 5 configuration. I'm not going to select a compute uh, host because I have DRS set up. I'm only going to select the VM storage policy, which is stretched plus RAID 5. So I've just selected that. It shows the vSAN data store as compatible. And I'm just going to click through these screens because we've probably all seen these screens a thousand times before. And there's no point in going over it again. So that was my first virtual machine. Now I'm going to create the second virtual machine. The second virtual machine um, is going to be a virtual machine which is also stretched across locations, uh, but doesn't have any local uh, failure protection. So it's going to be named stretched plus no local protection. Most of the rest will speak for itself. I just need to select that particular storage policy again. So in this case, I'm going to select the no local protection so that the name aligns with the, uh, the policy and we can validate that when we're done provisioning the virtual machines. Just click through the screens, and then I'm going to uh, provision the last uh, virtual machine. This uh, last virtual machine is going to be that virtual machine, which is not 
stretched across uh, locations or at least shouldn't be stretched across uh, locations so i'm going to give it a i'm going to give it a name which is not stretched and then uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to select a, um, a, a policy now what i'm going to show uh, in this particular case is I'm going to select an incorrect policy and we'll validate within a couple of seconds how it has been deployed and then we're going to change the policy to show you how easy it is to change the policy and mitigate any mistakes you may have made uh, during, uh, during the process. So in this particular case the virtual machine will be deployed and we're going to check the first virtual machine which should have a RAID 1 configuration followed by two RAID 5 configurations underneath, both residing in a different fault domain. So there's the RAID 1 configuration, there's the RAID 5 configuration in the preferred fault domain, so that's the first set, and then there's the second RAID 5 configuration in the secondary fault domain. So protection across sites and protection locally as well. For the stretched virtual machine without local protection, we should only see a single RAID 1 configuration, and that's what we are seeing here copy of the data in the secondary site and a copy of the data in the preferred site. Now, last but not least, the not stretched virtual machine. Uh, as you may recall, I just made a mistake. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix that mistake. So I'm going to click on the virtual machine, go to VM policies and add it to policy itself. Uh, as you can see, I selected the incorrect policy. So I'm going to select the correct policy. I'm going to click apply all. So it's applied to all of the different aspects of the virtual machine i'm going to click ok and now this will be applied to that particular uh, virtual machine i'm going to check compliance uh, but as you can see what we have now is a single rate 5 configuration and protection only in the preferred fault domain and with that i would like to thank you for watching and i hope to see you next time